Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got ICM's latest release. This is the 148 scale Cessna O2 Skymaster. So let's face it, who's seen Back 21? That's a type of version is. I know it's not exactly this one because of the window and all the rest of it, but you get the gist of it iconic film and I've actually waited for something like this to come out for some time. 48 scale, originally I was a little bit skeptical of it but speaking to a lot of people they are saying it's actually not so much of a small kit as I thought it may have been. Anyway that's enough of my thoughts, let's have a look at the kit. So nice little bit of box art, I said I see I never go massively over but they show you exactly what it is so that's what's really nice with it so it's not detracted by anything else on there. Okay so it is a reconnaissance aircraft so there's lots of glass and various things to see on this one. Very lightly armed, okay, but it was quick. Quick run round on the box, we can see a little bit about the uh, one down in here, saying 337 of them were built. Okay, and then down on here, you've got your kit number for this one, which is 48290. Okay, and some of the markings you can see just down in there in the box and around on this side. And this is sealed, which I didn't know. Just shows how we don't go poking around in the boxes. Let's have a look to see what we've got in here. This is one of those kits I could see myself building in a heartbeat because it does look very, very nice. Talk about make sure it's sealed up, ICM. Okay, so as always with ICM, it is a box within a box. So, there we go. And there we are greeted by, nice. Okay, so it looks like we've got one big bag which is fair enough, just down like that. And we've got some nice big booklet. Let's leave that bit. Okay, so down in here we have the uh, colour call-outs, various things down in here. So obviously it's talking about Revel and Tamiya colours. God knows why they're going down that route. It's going to take you back a step back, really. Obviously, uh, technical details about it. And obviously it's in Russian or in uh, English. Oh, decals, nice. Very nice, okay. So, parts call out again. We, I thought that this may be the case. There's a couple of bits you're not going to be using here, so obviously that will probably be more on the Sybil version, perhaps, or a later version. Okay, so usual thing, working right the way through the interior. So we've got the bulkheads and all the lumps and bumps and the radio and communication racks and everything that are going to be inside this particular one. All the reconnaissance bits, okay, right the way through. We do get a little bit of engine detail, which is quite nice. So you can see that down in there. And then obviously we've got the gear with the wheels, we've got the engine being fitted down there in the front, the wheel wells being fitted in, the various exhausts going onto there like that. And then installing the actual front end with the rudder pedals and the main gear with the gear well and that rear sort of radio communications gear in the back being fitted in. Seats being fitted down in there, control yokes, and obviously goes onto the instrument panel being fitted in there like that, onto the floor pan and seats going through as we might expect. Okay, then you've got all the interior being shoved in together, going in like that. Windows looks like they're going from the inside, which I was sort of hoping it might be going from the outside, and that way we put them in later. We'll see if there's a little bit of a bezel to stop that happening shortly. Good detail on the inside, right the way down, we've got a couple of M16s being fitted down in there to the bulkhead walls. Saying about a nose weight, because obviously this thing would be a tail sitter, so 10 grams uh, of nose weight going down in there as well. We've actually got the instrument panel sort of combing with a gun sight being fitted to the top of that one. Then we've got the push me prop, obviously a push me pull me system on this one. So this is the push prop going onto the rear. We've got the gear being fitted down into that one. And then obviously we've got the uh, pull me prop being fitted onto the front with the front windscreen being fitted in there just like that. Okay. Wings bit system, top one being fitted in there, glass going in first, so we assume it is bezeled, and then that uh, top wing being fitted down onto the actual main fuselage, and then obviously we've got the air scoop being fitted down in there for the rear engine, being fitted onto that one. Aerials, lumps and bumps, as you might imagine, being fitted down on there. And then we've got the control surfaces and everything going on. So down in here, we've got the back system with the tail boom being fitted down into that one and the rudders going onto that one. Tail boom system being fitted down and then mated to the actual main wing. And then the wing lower wings being fitted up, which is then gonna obviously laminate that lot actually together. Remembering to open up the holes if you want to for obviously your rocket pods and various stores you might wanna hang under the wings. Okay, nose wheel door being fitted, we've got the ailerons being fitted, uh, we've actually got the stri uh, strength bars up to the actual uh, wings, okay, gear being fitted onto there, some straights being fitted down underneath and your weapons pylons, obviously for those ones if you've opened up the holes. Okay, and then obviously we've got she got the sway braces on the pylons being fitted into that one, rocket pods being fitted into there, down onto that one. And again, different versions, different ways of doing it, so you can actually have rocket pods, they look like 
uh, zoomy rockets on there. Uh, we've got a gun pod being fitted into that one. Obviously you could put in pretty much any weapons loadout you might want to. Um, I don't know if we get a master. Do we get a master? I didn't see one, if I'm honest. Um, I don't know if this is one-to-one -one scale and you're using it as a mask template. If so, that's actually not a bad idea. So what you could do is, it just so happens, because I always have it stuck to my bench, you can come along then, pop this on like this, cut round it, okay, and then you have a perfect mask for it to be fitted onto your model. So that's actually, I think, the next best idea. So actually that's quite good. So down on here, obviously, we've got the placement for all these masks. You can do it. So you don't get the mask set, but you get templates. That's quite a nice idea. Okay, markings wise, as you can see, we've got that usual sort of um, Air Force Grey colour being fitted right the way down and the lighter white on the underside being fitted into this one. They're all pretty much the same, but you get different markings down in here for different ones. Quite nice. Got a little bit of red on that one. And that one hasn't got any red on the tail, various things, or a very nice all in black which is quite nice for a nice little dark one as well. Actually, that looks really, really very, very nice. Okay, so over into the decals. As you can see up in here, we got the actual decals looking very, very nicely indeed. Good quality, minimum carrier film and very, very flat. Can't really feel them at all. So again, nice decals by ICM. Used a few of theirs now. I uh, built a few ICM kits and the decals have always been very, very nice. Okay, one giant O bag. But again, they are very nice and snug and secure and the clear parts are separately bagged, which we will obviously have a look at in a moment. Okay, so if we start in here. Okay, so as you can see, big old sprue here with the main wing and things like that. It's got that very nice light gray. It feels quite rubbery. Um, the actual styrene itself is quite soft. It's got that non-chinky sound, it's the soft stuff, okay? Level of detail though is absolutely beautiful. If we look around on the, the close-up, you can probably see on that wing, it's actually a very flat grey on this, so it's difficult to pick up the actual parts. But as you can see, the panel lining and recess details, um, you know, inspection hatches, things like that, very, very nicely done. Instrument panel down in here, as you can see, it's a very nice level of details. And then working our way down, we've actually got the main fuselage area. We've got the gun, rocket pods, and all the various parts, and all of them actually look very, very nice indeed, I have to say. Good, clean, crisp area, no sign of any sink marks, no sign of any real flash on this either. So actually, that's not too bad. We've got the floor pan working our way up. We've got the seats, and back up to the top. On the flip side, as you can see, really very, very nice. Internally as well, we do have some ejector pins, but luckily for us, they've shifted them all out of the way. So down in here, we've got some at the top here, which I don't think you're really gonna see. We've got an ejector pin there, but don't forget we've got that electronics rack down here at the back. So all the rest of them is pretty clear. And again, if you look at down in here, you can see you are gonna to have to put the glass in from the inside because it's bezeled. So there'll be a drop in fit from the inside. But now we do get the mask set, that helps out no end. Okay, so that's actually quite nice. You could, and again, this is one of those ones where you think, yeah, okay. But you could technically put them in afterwards um, and then just come in and then push them through from the inside to the outside. And then the last one obviously be the windscreen going on the front. You could do it that way. I'm not saying advised to do it because it might be a bit tricky getting the parts in, but it might be an option to try and do that one. So yeah, very nice indeed. Okay, there's only two big sprues for this one, as you can see, but they're all very, very nicely done. And again, down underneath here, we've got lots of detail with those inspection hatches on the underside. The tail boom, we've got some nice details with the engine. And we've actually got some veining on the pots there. So that's quite nice. The tail, very nice indeed. Those tail booms, they've all got inspection hatches and the panel lines all beautifully done. Nicely recessed. Push me, pull me props each side. We've got the gear. Um, we've got the rudder pedals down in there. We've got the actual wheels themselves, again the other uh, booms, okay, front end and tail end parts there as well for the actual cowlings, and then there's that other wing, flight yokes, things like that on there, just like that, and again on the blind side, pretty darn good, these are a little bit raised down in here, but I think we'll be fine with that, and again good, clean, sharp, moulded, ejector pins are very, very fine, we know it's not a big part, but they're very fine, very close to being blended to the surface. Okay, last up, make or break, clear parts. Don't fail me now, ICM, and you can see they don't. They are absolutely crystal clear. Easy for the flat ones, clearly, but this front one uh, is not. 
and again that's pretty darn clear like that no problem with those whatsoever and again they're bezels as you can probably see down on here so they'll fit hopefully perfectly with the actual uh, part itself with those ones being bezeled so they should come through flush no flash on any of those as well so no problem with those fitting as long as they've got it all right and there you have it i have to say it, it looks an absolute corker of a kit very small because still all together you're only going to be they don't put sizes on boxes anymore like they used to but it's only going to probably be around about i would say 25 centimeters maybe all in something else like that so it's going to be very small very compact but actually a lot of detail in a very small model so there we go that's an absolute must from me that is icm's brand new 148 scale o2a skymaster